You've probably heard it said before, but perception is reality. Oftentimes, leaders will say, well, I'll just let my hard work speak for itself. The reality is that your hard work often doesn't speak for itself, or at least it doesn't tell the whole story about you. You have to speak for your own hard work. We all have to actively shape the perception that others have of us and our abilities, not in a self-aggrandizing way or whatever, but in a way that doesn't leave the story of you to be shaped by other people. Dr. Mindy Hall is joining me today. She's going to teach us how to do exactly that on the One Simple Thing podcast. It's time to build a better business by building a better you. This is One Simple Thing. Welcome to the show. Dave Kirby here. I'm uh, honored to be joined again by Dr. Mindy Hall. She is president and CEO of Peak Development Consulting. Uh, She hosts her own podcast called Peak Development Radio. Uh, She's a contributing columnist for Entrepreneur Magazine, and she's also authored a book, a very fine book called Leading with Intention. Every moment is a choice. I love the idea that every moment of every day, every, every interaction, uh, every meeting, every time we, uh, we deal with somebody is a chance. It's a choice for us to uh, present ourselves in a way that gains other people's respect and uh, shows us as a leader. And if we live more intentionally, take advantage of those opportunities, what a difference it can make in the long run. So I'm really excited to get into today's show. Dr. Mindy Hall, thank you for joining me here on the One Simple Thing podcast. Dave, thanks for having me. We are uh, talking about your book, which is called Leading with Intention. Every moment is a choice. And before we get into kind of what we're going to talk about today, can we just kind of recap the importance of intentionality in our leadership? Because I I think it's probably one of the things that most of us have never even really thought about. I think uh, the way that I would basically, um, basically encapsulate that, Dave, is that you have within your hands the ability to show up any way that you want in the world, in your leadership, in your families, in your communities, and to leave that to chance and not think about how you want to show up and then basically live into that picture is to leave a lot of potential on the table. And so when you think about leading with intention, it begins with self-awareness. That's the foundation. It begins with looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, how do I impact the environment in which I live, work, play? How, how am I showing up to the people in my life? And how do I want to show up to the people in my life? And then, again, being consistent in living into that picture that you're painting for yourself. You've uh, mentioned this a couple of times on previous episodes uh, here, uh, but you talk about the fact that, you know, we might not be perfect at this right away, right? So, it, you know, it's not like I'm going to dive in and go, I'm totally intentional today from now on. <laughs> and every interaction I have is totally, uh, perfectly intentional. Uh, in fact, uh-huh. part two in your book is called Rome Was Not Built in a Day. <laughs> Leading with intention takes practice, right? So it's it's a process. We're going to start today. But it's something that's gonna it's gonna take us probably the rest of our lives to really master, huh? Absolutely. It it is it is definitely a process. It's not an event. It's not a program. It's not a ten steps. It's not a training, you know, device. It is it is a decision. And it's a decision to choose in the direction of living your life more intentionally, living your leadership more intentionally, and knowing that it's going to be small tweaks in your behavior over time that actually make the impact. So if you can think of, you know, behavior, human behavior basically operates in three realms. There's, if you can think of it in concentric circles, and this model is in the book as well, and the innermost circle is awareness. So that's the cognitive piece. That's the, hey, I want to show up more intentionally in my leadership. You know, you think that thought. The the next outer ring around awareness is integration. And that's simply taking the cognitive thought to behavior and saying, okay, if I want to show up more aware in my leadership, here are two things I'm going to do, or one thing I'm going to do from, you know, here on out for the, the rest of the month. And that, that move from awareness to integration is really moving from your head to your actions. And then the outermost layer is called embodiment. And that's just consistency over time. And the more consistently you practice something, the more it becomes part of how you operate. And so if I say, okay, I'm going to do this one thing because I want to become more present in my leadership or more intentional in my leadership, and you do that consistently over time, it will become part of your regular operating style. And so that's how it happens. And that is a process over time for sure. And people toggle back and forth. The the biggest toggle is between awareness and integration. 
where we know what we want to do. We try to do it. And then, you know, we get under pressure and we go back to kind of our same old, same old and say, oh, I didn't want to do that. And so, but that's a normal process. That's a normal process of learning a new behavior. You know, I, I liken this to the example of going on a diet. You know, I'm forever wanting to lose 10 pounds, right? I know to lose 10 pounds, I need to eat less calories and exercise more. Intellectually, I get that, right? Behaviorally, when it comes to integration, I have a hard time passing the M&Ms at the candy aisle. Mm, I hear <laughs> and you. I, you know, and I don't want to get up and go to the gym. And so I, that toggle between awareness and integration is simply the human process of learning a new behavior. And then if I pass the M&Ms, you know, over and over the candy aisle and I go to the gym and I do that consistently, then I become, I operate in a new way and that becomes part of my new operating style. So that, this is the same thing, very much that same pattern. Part of uh, what you talk about as far as uh, living intentionally or, or managing or leading with intentionality uh, is a concept that you talk about of kind of managing our, our own story or managing our own uh, persona, I guess you might say. Mm-hmm. Uh, you talk about how you often hear leaders say, I'll let my hard weeks, uh, hard work speak for itself, but that oftentimes that doesn't speak for itself. We have to be intentional about what is going to be spoken about us. Yeah, the, this is the old adage, perception is reality, right? And And when leaders say things like, I'll let my hard work speak for itself, it's a really nice sentiment, but it isn't the reality is that hard work doesn't often speak for itself. You have to speak for your hard work, not in a self-aggrandizing way, but in a way that people understand what you've contributed or it's an indicator of, you know, your ability or what you've done. And I think that what happens is sometimes we don't manage the story of ourselves in an organization. Perfect example. It's, it's a um, example in the book. There was a gentleman that I worked with. He um, wanted to go on a expat assignment, but he didn't tell anybody that. He had three children. He had a wife that worked outside the home and he hadn't been clear about that with his boss. His boss made some stories up about him having three children, a wife that was also working outside the home and an expat assignment came up and he offered it to a gentleman who didn't have a family and didn't have three children. And, and he, the, it was basically a misunderstanding. The The boss really thought he was being, um, he was being, you know, good to the guy in terms of not asking him to uproot his family. The guy was like, holy cow, how come you didn't consider me? And he said, I never knew you would be interested in that. So it was merely a, a story that had been created. And the gentleman who you know, didn't get to go on the expat assignment was somebody who hadn't done a good job of managing the story of himself and the organization. And so stories got created around him that were not actually true. And it wasn't anybody having bad intention about it. It was just that stories got created and he didn't manage the story of himself well. So the lesson here is that uh, probably for all of us, stories are going to be created, right? Because that's the way we interact with each other, right? Right. We make assumptions about other people. We can't, you know, it, it's hard to do otherwise because you can't right. sit down and have a heart-to-heart conversation about every little thing in our lives. So we we tend to generalize and kind of put people in categories, et cetera. Mm-hmm. If that's going to happen, then we have to do what we can to make sure the stories that people are telling about us are accurate. That's right. That's how do, right. How do we do that? So there's a there's a, another uh, tool in the book called the Rule, rule of Three. And essentially, this is determine three messages about yourself you'd like others to know. So these are all, all the tools in the book, Dave, are intended to be very simple, right? And lots of things that you can immediately apply. So first, determine the three messages about yourself you'd like others to know, and then identify three people you want to know those messages. And then identify three actions you'll take to make that possible. So it's a, it's a rule of three, three messages you want about yourself, three people you want to know those messages, and three actions you'll take to make that possible. Can you give me maybe a quick example of the kinds of messages that we might tell about ourselves? Well, let's take the example of the the expat opportunity. So three messages that he might have said was, I'd really be interested in working outside of the United States at some point. I have um, a family that's mobile. My kids are not in school yet at an age that, you know, I'm worried about taking them out of school. Um, and 
you know, I'd like to be considered for those opportunities. Those would be three messages. Mm Mm-hmm. And then you, know, you find the people in leadership that you feel like need to know those messages. Exactly. Could be his boss, could be somebody in HR, could be a mentor. And then he figures out what are three actions he'll take to make that possible. Could, you know, bring it up in his performance review with his boss, might have coffee with somebody from HR. And a bit again, it's that intentionality of managing that story for yourself so that you're not relying on stories that get made up around you. Because to your point, there absolutely will be stories that get created. And again, not out of bad intention place, right. but because we live in a shorthand, right? Which is we create assumptions because it helps us kind of get through our day quickly. And we can't sit down and talk yeah. about everything to the nth degree. So that, that I think is um, an example that, that would show that, that uh, tool in action. Wonderful advice. I love that. And uh, I know people could find that rule of three uh, in your book. Uh, it's called Leading with Intention. Every moment is a choice. We were, uh, we'll were we tell you information about how you can find that book uh, here in just a moment. Mindy, again, thank you for being with me. I'm looking forward to next time. Dave, thanks so much. You can uh, pick up Dr. Hall's book. It's called Leading with Intention. Every moment is a choice. There's a banner ad on the right-hand side of the page when you go to onesimplethingonline.com. Click on it. It will take you to Amazon, and we will make a few cents as well uh, for your purchase to uh, support what we do here at the show as well. Yeah, I love uh, Mindy's uh, subject matter today because I, I think, you know, in my own life, I've thought of it as being very kind of self-promoting, you know, to be controlling what other people think of me. It it just almost seems, you know, people climbing all over everybody and, you know, trying to work the system or whatever. But that's not the case at all. And I think Mindy brought it to home, I think, in a really uh, powerful and profound way today, uh, that people make assumptions based on a few interactions or a few experiences. It's how we get through our day. We can't sit down and give deep thought to every little interaction that takes place. So we have to manage how people interact with us. We have to manage what people's thoughts are as they come away from us. And that takes some intentionality. So commit yourself to that today. I'm Dave Kirby. Dr. Mindy Hall going to be back with me on the next episode. Hopefully you'll be here as well as we continue talking about leading with intention on the next One Simple Thing podcast.